All right, to finish up the Algebra 2, page 66 work, we left off on number 11. Problem number 12 has us working with the function f of x equals 0.4x times x minus 6. This one actually, um, we need to look at this as if it is in that uh, intercept form, and I'll show you how intercept form is kind of hidden in this one. F of x, watch what I do here, 0.4. Notice how I just took this x that was by itself, and I'm actually going to pull a p value of 0 and a q value of 6. And we were messing around with intercept form and knowing that the x value of the vertex, and I'm looking back at my notes, but if I remember correctly, the axis of symmetry, x equals, is p plus q divided by 2. And if that's the axis of symmetry, that's actually the x value of the vertex. So if I've got my x value of the vertex at 3, uh, the question wants me to find the x-intercepts. These are my x-intercepts. The describer of the function is increasing and decreasing. All I need is the x value of the vertex. This is um, what I need to be able to talk about how this parabola is going to be opening up. And since this parabola is opening up, I'm going to say that it is decreasing to the left of 3, and it's increasing to the right of 3. In our notes, we have the whole increasing, decreasing, and vertex stuff falling under standard form, but the exact same thing is going on with decreasing and increasing. You just need the x value of the vertex or what that axis of symmetry x is. Um, that was all for number 12. Intercepts and what's it doing, and I'm looking for decreasing to the left of 3, increasing to the right of 3. Number 13, we've got a, like a situation going on here. A grasshopper can jump incredible distances up to 20 times its length. The height in inches of the jump above the ground of a one inch long grasshopper is given by the function, I'm gonna jot this function down as I'm reading it, h of x equals negative one over 20 x squared plus x, where x is the horizontal distance of the jump. When the grasshopper jumps off a rock, it lands on the ground two inches farther. What, write a function that models the new path of the jump so what I'm getting out of this is that it, let's see, when it jumps, it lands two inches farther. I'm looking at this as probably a translation. It lands two inches farther. Translation right to And if I'm going to be dealing with a translation to the right, um, translations right have an impact on the x values. And this is not in translations right and left. Horizontal translations impact the x values. Wherever I see an x value, I need to do consider this to be an x minus h. Did they give me a name for a new function? No, I'll just write it as g of 8x. What I'm going to, uh, what I want to do is before I go and put before I go and square x, I've got to take my x value and subtract 2 from it. It's moving to the right, but we know that appears inside parentheses as the opposite sign of what we think. And then we're going to add to this x minus 2. That's all. Take the x values and do a translation right on both of them. x value, translation right. x value, translation right. So that's the model for the new path. I'm not even going to simplify it. I'm going to leave it right like that. So translation right affects x by subtracting, and it happens inside parentheses. It has to do with that x minus h piece. Number 14, passenger is stranded in a stranded lifeboat, shoots a distress flare into the air. The height of the flare above the water is given by the function f of t equals negative 16t times the quantity t minus 8. The passenger shoots a second flare. 
whose path is modeled in the graph, what flare travels higher. So the second flare um, has a maximum, let's see, the maximum of the second flare is 196 feet. And I know that because the vertex is given as three and 196. The maximum is the X value. So the second flare's maximum value is right in the picture for us. At three and a half seconds, it hits 196 feet. I need to find out the first flare's maximum value. I need to find out the first flare's value of, uh, Y value of the vertex in order to figure this one out. So I've got F of T equals negative 16 T times T minus eight. And couple things I'm gonna do here, let's see. Let me change this over into the intercept form like I showed you before, T minus zero. T minus eight. So I'm gonna get some x-intercepts out of this, P and Q. And the reason I'm grabbing the x-intercepts is I know I can get the x-value of the vertex by saying P plus Q divided by two. That's gonna leave me with four as the x-value of the vertex. If I plug in four as the x-value of the vertex, F of four is gonna be equal to negative 16 times four times the quantity four minus eight. And that's gonna give me the maximum height of this first flare. And I'm finding out that that's 256 feet. And what the heck did they want you to know? Which flare travels higher, which remains in the air longer? Well, first of all, I think that the, air, the first flare travels highest and which one is gonna remain in the air the longest? Well, if this vertex was at three and 196 and this one's at four and 256 at the halfway point, I could imagine this one landing. If three is the highest point, it's gonna land three seconds later. If four is the highest point, it's gonna land four seconds later. So flare one is the highest and it's in the air the longest. That had everything to do with the vertex and maximums and your maximum.